Welcome aboard this Aquastar 45. During a recent trip to see my friends over at De Valk Yacht Brokers in the Netherlands, I came across this Aquastar 45, which was built in 1999. So I thought I would jump on board quickly and show you around before catching my flight back to London. Coming up soon, I'll be heading to Spain for a sea trial aboard Vanguard, hole number two of the XPM 78 range of long range explorer yachts. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit that subscribe button now and come and follow me on Instagram for live updates and sneak previews. As well as the big explorer expedition and trawler super yachts which I feature on my channel, I know that many of you, my subscribers, love these smaller coastal explorers which are designed to go out in conditions most fair weather boaters try to keep clear of. And if you are looking to start or get back into boating, then personally, this 13.82 meter boat with its two cabins and seven berths is a great option. As you can see by the equipment on a radar mast, this boat is designed and built to be operated offshore. In fact, this boat holds a CE Category B rating. And thanks to these stainless steel davits on the stern, if you do find a secluded anchorage, then you can go and explore it aboard your own tender. This boat has a top speed of 23 knots with a cruising speed of 18 knots, which is perfect for darting around the coast in between weather systems. Starboard side gate over here, nice high guard rails running all the way around the side deck, helping you feel nice and safe and of course secure. When you do find that picturesque cove, then you can drop the Bruce anchor and let the 50 meters of stainless steel chain find its resting place on the seabed. And once you're done, you can power up the electric windlass before motoring along the coast. One of the features of this Aquastar that I like is the fact that not only does it have port and starboard side decks, but it also has a split deck leading up to the cockpit. Again, when you are punching through those white horses, then you don't have to worry about water accumulation in the cockpit. Descending down into the saloon, we find a seating area over to port with another seating area over to starboard. Note also the grab rails on the overhead, which again is a sign that this boat really is designed to be operated all year round. As mentioned, this boat does have a two cabin layout. So let's start by having a look in the owner's cabin aft. There is a French bed that can be accessed on both sides and as you can see there is plenty of storage space so you're not going to run out of places to keep your belongings. As you can see the curtains are currently shut and we are inside a boathouse so it is quite dark down here but I didn't really have time to get everything open before filming. Of course being the owner's cabin it does have an ensuite as well and that was my attempt at trying to chop off a navy salute obviously it didn't quite go according to plan in case you are wondering the freshwater tank on this boat holds around 625 liters which is around 138 gallons when it comes to owner's cabins on boats which do you prefer forward aft or midships let me know in the comments the amount of cabinetry in this particular cabin is really impressive i'm not sure about you but i would struggle to find enough stuff to fill all of these various drawers a decent sized bed there as well double bed plenty of room for you and of course your favorite person but more cabinetry over here probably put my phone in there or spare batteries or whatever it is and over here got some hanging wardrobe space amongst this grab rail. Here's a question for you on these boat tours. Do you like to see what is behind the cabinetry doors or not? I always read the comments on every one of my videos, but I still can't figure out whether you want to see behind these doors or not. So let me know in the comments below. But now we've finished having a look around the owner's cabin. Let's head back up over the saloon so I can show you around the helm station which on this boat is located on the starboard side. Nice raised seating area over here with a foot plate to make sure you can keep yourself strapped in when you're taking on those big waves. Throttle control levers, uh, rain marine display over here uh, for the radar, got bow thruster control and your traditional 
dials over here. Everything is in really good condition. Uh, Raytheon depth and speed, rudder angle indicator, uh, VHF radio, and I love this traditional wheel as well. The steering on the flybridge and the main helm station is hydraulic, so maneuvering is effortless. Descending down into the galley. I do like the fact that down here we find another seating area that is directly opposite the galley. A great place to sit and relax as your oppo makes a meal. Opposite the U-shaped seating area, we've got a U-shaped galley as well. A microwave over here, twin stainless steel sink. As you would expect to find on a boat of this type, there is an oven and nestled into the Corian countertops is a two burner hob. On the opposite side, there is also a small fridge with a freezer compartment. Remember, this boat is not designed for long distance open ocean cruising, but instead is designed for exploring the coast. Now that we've finished having a look around the galley, let's go and check out the guest cabin starting in the guest bathroom. As I show you around, let me give you some more information regarding the various systems on board this Aquastar and some more of her dimensions. She has a beam of 4.55 meters with a draft of just 1.14 meters. Her air draft is 3 meters and inside the headroom is a fairly generous 1.95 meters. She has a displacement of 17 tons, which as mentioned before makes her a great boat for someone who perhaps wants to upgrade from maybe a center console or something similar, or who wants to get back into boating. She has a black water tank and a separate small gray water tank for the two showers on board. You might have also noticed as we walked around the upper deck earlier that some of the teak imitation slats will need some re-gluing. She does have air conditioning and heating. So again, you can tell that this boat was designed and built for all season boating, which in my humble opinion, is the best sort of boating. I hope you have enjoyed this quick look around this Aquastar. I really couldn't resist jumping on board and giving you a quick tour. Before we talk about the engines, it is worth pointing out that at the time of making this video and uploading it to my YouTube channel, the vessel is listed for sale for a very reasonable 199,500 euros with VAT paid. To find out more, head to the link pinned in the comments or the link in the video description. In terms of fuel capacity, she has two 1,100 litre aluminium fuel tanks and they feed the twin Volvo TMD 63P turbo, 375 horsepower engines. The engines have 1,565 hours on them and are cooled thanks to a fresh water heat exchanger. She's also fitted with a 6 kVA generator that is installed in a soundproof box. If you are interested in finding out more, then of course I'll leave the relevant links in the video description and I'll pin a link in the comments as well. And if you love coastal explorers, then you'll be glad to know that I've got a playlist dedicated to featuring these kind of vessels. You'll find a link for that playlist in the video description.